All right, Daddy Jack's going with the Blues. We're back at it. Shane, Shane O'Connell and I, you know, it's uh, early part of January 2018. We're just getting back into doing a new recipe. And uh, so we had a Noe Socha here from New York. Fantastic uh, guitar player. And Noe right now is down in uh, Memphis Blues Challenge, down in Memphis. Uh, you know, best blues in the country right there. So he's out of New York and he's not here, but uh, I did him a, a nice uh, bolognese. He was from Italy and we did a bolognese. While he was here, I didn't have time to do the recipe. He had to go right back. So but we're gonna do the, we'll do the recipe here for you today. So um, I'm gonna do it in two stages, okay? Um, I'm gonna brown, I wanna brown the meat here. Uh, this is some nice uh, grass-fed right here, some really nice hamburger local. But uh, what I like to do is, I like to get the, the meat browned, but also kind of caramelize the vegetables too. So, got some nice smoked bacon. And again, you know, I've, I've done these recipes before and everybody says, well, that's not how my mother made it. and. You know what, everybody, this is like a, like a minestrone soup or a pasta vajoul or everybody's got their own, their own uh, variation of it. So, so I brown the bacon, get a little bit of bacon grease going. That always adds some nice flavor. So, what I like to do is I put a lot of people don't like the green bell pepper. But I think a lot of things they don't like about the green bell pepper is that uh, it's kind of the rawness of it, so 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 powerful. But whenever I'm, I'm cooking soups or anything with the green bell pepper, I always put that in first. Sweat it down. I also put plenty of garlic. I like to cook all that together for a little bit. Give that, give that uh, green bell pepper a head start. Develop, develop the flavors. See? We want to get that nice. I like to brown that up a little bit. Okay, next we're gonna do some onion. Carrot, I like to put carrot in. Celery. Red bell pepper. Dry, I'm gonna put just a little bit of a uh, little bit of good old butter in there. See how we got the nice caramelization on uh, the beginning of it. Okay, we're gonna let that all brown up. We'll be right back. All right, so got our veg cooked up real nice. Gonna mix that with our beef. What I'm gonna do is uh, red or white wine. That's what everybody the question. Whatever you like, a little bit lighter. The bowling edge be a little bit lighter. Uh, a little darker with the red wine. Just cook that down a little bit. Hey, a little bit of dried thyme. If you got fresh, it's even better. A couple pinches. A couple pinches of oregano. And one good pinch. Okay. Now, uh, 
like a little texture. Now this is a meat sauce, so I don't go ultra heavy on the uh, tomatoes. So. I don't, I don't use tomato paste in my uh, bolognese. That's the Ultra Cucina, of course, from Modesto, Modesto, California. Okay. A little bit of water. See that now? Oh boy. Now that's a meat sauce, bolognese. I'm going to reduce that down by like three quarters, the red wine. And we'll be right back. Alrighty, so we got the red wine all reduced down. That saved us a step. See, we could have just done it in the pot. So I just uh, deglaze the pan a little bit here. You no? Know? Don't want to waste that flavor. Okay. That's it. That's a that's a bolognese. What I'm gonna do is add just a little bit of water. A little bit of water just so we cook it down a little bit. Give it a time for the flavors to meld. Alright, we'll be right back. Okay, while our bolognese is cooking, I'm gonna show you a little trick I do with the pasta. A nice rigatoni. Isabella, that's, I love it. Right at Restaurant Depot. Nice, uh, right straight from Italy. Beautiful stuff. So, we're gonna boil that up. I'll show you this little trick that I do after. Get that boiling. See our sauce cooking nice. See that, Shane? Look at that. See, I like to see the chunks of tomato. I love to see that. And not just a red, not just the overly red bolognese. I got uh, 30 seconds after the boil, 30, maybe a little bit longer. I drain it off. Still like super al dente, probably three quarter cooked. And I lay it, I lay it out. So I don't, I don't, I don't rinse it. I don't rinse it at all with uh, water. That's how I cook my pasta and drain it. Don't drain it with, rinse it with cold water or anything. So, just leave that, let that cool at room temperature. And uh, so, but you know, but to order, I'm gonna take some of it now. How much you want to eat, Shane? You hungry? A little bit. Huh? Okay. A little more. So right back in the boiling water. Ben, put that on the rack over there for me. So what I do? Look at that now. Oh man. You got smell of vision on that camera yet, uh, Shane? Not yet. In, in the development stage? It's the next <laughs> oh man. So, so you know, it's the real bolognese. They put uh, they put cream into it. Okay. But I do that. I don't do that in the cooking stage. I do that when I'm gonna finish it off. There's another little trick, okay? Put it up here where it's warm. 
There's always a little bit left in that container. So we'll give that about another couple, about a minute, minute and a half. A little bit of Parmesan. Now hey, just for a little shock value, good old American cheese. Sorry, we're making it. I'm gonna get all these people answering from Italy and everything, saying, what? You just bastardized our recipe. I don't always do this. I did, I kind of just did it for shock value. And then, uh, like we got a little bit, I don't have the fresh basil, we ground it with a little bit of olive oil. We're gonna put a little bit in. Don't worry, Steve, I didn't use too much. Look at that. Woo! We'll be right back. Hey, then my friend Don. Always somebody always shows up. Good friends always show up. Don, this Don, and Don, Don, Don and his son had the Marquee Gallery. This is where it's happening. Right here. <laughs> so bolognese. You ever had a bolognese? I've heard of it. You got meat sauce. Meat sauce, haven't you? Hey, Shane. Look at that. They came out of there. People always throw that in the garbage. Yeah, pasta bolognese. Okay, Don. Well, uh, a little bit of Parmesan. Is your weapon. Careful, it's gonna be hot. It's gonna be hot. Yeah. We'll adjust the salt and pepper if we want. A little more salt, a little more red know. pepper if you want a little red pepper. I don't think it needs anything. So Don, you opened a Marquee Gallery how long ago? Three years. Three years? You know, a believer in New London. Yeah, it's a great art community here. We hope grow. Yeah. We become part of it all. Um, you and your son? Yeah. Partners? Clint. 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 Clint's the director. He's the director and owner of the Marquee Gallery. And Don lives up in Chaplin, Connecticut. I almost moved there. We moved back from Texas, Chaplin, Connecticut. But there it is, Daddy Jack's cooking with the blues. Little, little rigatoni bolognese. Come and visit New London, deep water park, deep water port. Uh, we got a little cold weather coming, flu season. This will knock you right out. Peace.
Well, we've just had a, a tremendous uh, night of music. It's mesmerizing. Noe Socha. It's, it's Socha? Soha. Soha. That's right. Okay. And, and uh, phenomenal uh, harmonica, guitar player, singer, and then uh, Cliff Schmidt. Uh, from you're from originally from from uh, Chicago, Chicago, and, and Texas. Yeah, I grew up in Texas. Yep. And um, and uh, now living in New York City, and the guy's playing out of Brooklyn, right? Yep. Yes. Based out of Brooklyn. That's right. And uh, uh, Jim Cardi, his beautiful wife Kimberly. Uh, you know, um, Jim introduced me. You know, Jim was from Boston, moved down here to New London, and uh, and has turned me on to some really good musicians. Um, and, and, and booked and, pr and promoted a lot of music and managed a lot of musicians up in Boston. And uh, Jim uh, hooked me up with Roberto Morbioli. It's played here a couple of times, right? Yeah. And uh, but when I was looking at some of Roberto's footage, uh, he was playing in your backyard, and Noe was uh, playing there. And I said to Jim, "Who who is that guy?" You know. I don't want to say he stole the show, but uh, you know he did. He he like held his own with Roberto. I mean, and and then some, you know. And uh, so uh, we booked. You know, uh, you guys were playing last night up in Boston, yep. and we got him on the on the rebound here, coming heading back to New York City. That's right. And so you know, I was kind of just kicking it around. You know, um, well, no, he liked to eat. You know, they he liked pizza. We know that. We saw earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Devastated one of our pies. That's right. right? That's good. And uh, so, but uh, he said, uh, uh, you know, uh, Jim, you know, uh, was telling me about, you know, the uh, Bolognese, because you're from Bologna, close to yeah, Bologna. Yeah, an hour away from there, from Carpi, which is about an hour from Bologna. Wow. Yeah. And he was saying earlier you came over when you were 18, 18 years old. I did, and I went to Berkeley, and I, you know, because I got a scholarship over there. Wow. And then. What, from, uh, from Italy? They heard you from Italy? Or well, yeah, because there is sent a... a submission or something? <laughs> there is a seminar that they do every summer in Italy called Umbria Jazz. Yeah. And Berkeley teachers basically host the seminar, and they gave me a scholarship to come here for, like, a little summer program. And then at the summer program, they gave me another scholarship to do the actual college. So that's, that's how that went. And, uh, and then I... Did Berkeley for three years and then worked there for a couple of years for in a class for blind students. I was basically teaching music technology to blind students because there is like some special accessible technology that Berkeley implements. And I did that for a couple of years because you know I, I was assisting the teacher. And then I moved to New York because it's like that's kind of a place you gotta be if you wanna make music. And wow. now we released our first album and we're playing all over the place and you know. Traveling as a duo. That's, That's right. right. Keep you, guys, light. you guys play with a full bands at all in the, in the city? Or oh, yeah. People we ask you to play all the time. Yeah, put, yeah. put something uh -huh. together? Yeah, I mean, we've done that. But, you know. Like the duo. You guys are seamless uh, playing together. You've only That's been playing right. together for a year. Right. Yes. Yeah, I mean, we both work with a lot of other people. Um, Noi works with uh, singer Paula Cole. I work with a jazz singer named Curtis Steigers. I. Um, and the house base is the Terra Blues in New oh, York City. Wow. Uh, so we both get around and play with other situations. But for this, we really wanted to keep it the two of us and like create a sound just with two people. You know, t uh, uh, the incredible part tonight was how much like music you put out as a duo. I mean, it's, it's like it's it's a lot. You think it's a trio, or I mean, it's just it's a full such a full sound. Oh, thank you. Yeah, really that's great. What we're striving for. Very really great. Sorry. Well, you know what? I'm going to get back up, and uh, I know you guys are hungry. You guys, uh, Definitely. And I'm going to dish up a bowl, uh, bowl of some bolognese for us, some rigatoni bolognese. Oh, that sounds, sounds good, great. man. All right, be right back. Excited. All right. This is going to be super hot. It just came off the burner. All right. Be careful. It smells really good. Really good. Bon Thank you. You're welcome, sir. No. Oh man, that's nice. Yeah, it's very good. I did a, I did my apprenticeship after cooking school in Hartford. That's just so good. With a chef from, uh, I think he's from somewhere around Bologna. I, uh, I got to find out exactly now. And uh, 
Carlo Galazzo. Okay. Is Genoa close to Bologna? Um, about a couple of hours, three hour drive. I think it's between Bologna and Genoa. Okay. And I learned a lot. I nice. learned a lot from him. Some little pancetta in there, Yeah. Yeah. This is really good. Put the red sauce and cream, pancetta. Well, it's like, no way we're talking about every, you know, bolognese sauce is like, um, it's our equivalent of chili. Oh, right, yeah. It's something, you know, uh, Whatever you every, every recipe is different. And so, you know, the problem is, like, we'll post we'll post the recipe up. We'll do a recipe of bolognese. Everybody's, oh, no, that's not the way it's supposed to be. No, and that's just, you know. <laughs> so we got to put a disclaimer on the beginning because it's like everybody's different. You know, some put red wine, some put white wine. Some don't put any wine. Oh, this is delicious. This is very good, man. You have good pasta too. It's like a lot of time when I eat pasta in this country, it's like really soft. Yeah. I like that it's like a little harder. Well, I learned this technique from a uh, from a chef of the the second Daddy Jacks we did, and uh, Salvatore Salvatore, he's from, he's from Sardinia. Mm. And he taught me this recipe where. You bring, you know, you had the boiling water, you had your pasta. Right. And then you can, you got a time, you got to play with it. Either 30 seconds to a minute. I guess it depends on the type of pasta also. Yeah. But drain it, you know, strain it, strain it, but don't cool it down with any water. And lay it, lay it, I lay it like this. I laid it on a, on a sheet tray. No. When it was still al dente, but it, it had a little carryover heat. And then the beauty is you don't rinse off the starch. Right. That's what adheres the sauce to the pasta, you know, when it's done. And then you, you can still you can still hold it al dente, but not over. Yeah. And once you have the water, that pasta is just like a sponge. That's right. It soaks the water right up. Yeah. Thank you. 